Hello, it's Mary here in St Paul's, uh, filming the service with, with John Schultz filming. It's so good to share this Eucharist with you today. Um, do stop to sing the hymns when uh, you wish. Um, the instructions are in the welcome sheet. As we meet in this way, I pray that God will uplift you, be close to you and give you all that you need for today and the days to come. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we sing of the Father's love begotten. The Lord of glory be with you. The Lord bless you. Dear friends, 40 days ago we celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we recall the day on which he was presented in the temple when he was offered to the Father and shown to his people. As a sign of his coming among us, his mother was purified as we now come to him for cleansing. In their old age, Simeon and Anna recognised him as their Lord as we today sing of his glory. In this Eucharist, we celebrate both the joy of his coming and his searching judgment, looking back to the day of his birth and forward to the coming days of his passion. Almighty Father, whose Son Jesus Christ was presented in the temple and acclaimed the light of the nations, grant that in him we may be presented to you and in the world may reflect his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let us therefore bring our sins into his light and confess them in penitence and faith. Almighty God, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May Almighty God forgive you confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and help you walk in the light of Christ. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Inspired by your Spirit, Lord, we gather in your temple to welcome your Son. Enlighten our minds and lay bare our inmost thoughts. Purify your people and make us obedient to the demands of your law so that we may mature in wisdom and grow to full stature in your grace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. The reading is from the book of Malachi, chapter 3. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. 
He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in the former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For God's holy word, thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Hebrews chapter 2. Since, therefore, the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. For God's holy word, thanks be to God. So we now... Sing, longing for light, we wait in darkness. Alleluia, alleluia. This child is the light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Amen. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, 
they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Candlemas. Jesus presented as a baby in the temple. Imagine the scene. Mary and Joseph bringing their precious 40-day-old baby to the temple to be presented to God in a ceremony, bringing two birds for sacrifice. The temple, a huge building. It must have felt overwhelming to this couple coming from a small village nearby as they climbed the large steps to the entrance. The temple, which symbolised the very presence of God in the midst of all the people. The one place where the great festivals such as Passover and Pentecost were celebrated. And as they enter, they see the menorah lit with seven flames of oil and the priest waiting for them to conduct the ceremony. But also there, Simeon, who'd been waiting for many years for the consolation of Israel and he'd been led by the Holy Spirit to the temple, perhaps he was feeling excited at what was to greet him. Anna also, a prophetess, who'd also been waiting many years for the Messiah, perhaps had even spoken to many people over the years about her hopes of his coming. Then as Simeon takes the baby in his arms and gives his song about this baby as a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, The people around watch as these words were said or sung, wondering at this, perhaps whispering, is this the one who's to come? As spoken about in our Torah, breaths hushed as they listened to Simeon and perhaps Anna too, though her words are not recorded in Luke's gospel. What a momentous, special, but very humble and quiet occasion. Jesus light of the world, coming to us as a Jewish baby, with obedient parents doing all that was expected of them in their Jewish tradition. God at work, bringing significant people together as Jesus, his precious son, was presented in that holy place. Candlemas is a major feast in the church calendar, which is what is commemorated in our gospel reading. Candles were traditionally blessed at this festival. The blessing of the candles on the day of presentation was from the words of Simeon, saying that the baby was a light to the Gentiles. The use of lights in worship goes back to the beginning of the church, but even further, among the Jews and in many pagan rites, the use of lights had long been uh, seen as appropriate for worship for God or God's. Probably among Christians, they were first used simply to dispel darkness. But the beautiful symbolism of their use was soon recognised by the Christian writers of the early church. Light is pure. It penetrates darkness. It nourishes life. It illumines all around. So it's a fitting symbol of God, pure, omnipresent source of grace and light, with Jesus, his Son, the light of the world. Here in this church, we have candles lit to celebrate Jesus as this light. And children brought for baptism are each given a special candle to symbolise them given the light of Christ and of taking it into the world. And at the end of each service in church, we're told to go in the light of Christ. There are two types of light, physical and spiritual, physical light necessary for life. But spiritual light is light conveying both an absence of darkness and a quality that will help us to see and understand more clearly. Understand God, God's light and wisdom guides us through troubled times and challenges. It was really good to see all the Christmas lights which seemed to lift the spirit somehow. And in a way, I'm sorry they've been put away for another year. But with Christ, we're talking about a different light, an inner 
spiritual light that all believers have, Christ light, the inner peace that we sometimes feel, the inner glow that occasionally we may sense the presence of God in and with us. How does this glow or difference change us? St Paul, seeing the bright light of God on the road to Damascus, became a completely changed man. Moses, earlier on as he saw the light of the burning bush, was told he was on holy ground and was given his commission to lead the people. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We're children of God, people being blessed and changed by God. The light is our understanding that God is our Father and an understanding of God's love for us and for the world. In the world around us, we see much darkness, despair, pain and suffering. We're here on the news of lockdowns and people suffering with this virus, causing endless harm and destruction. What is the answer? Who knows? But somehow our faith in God carries us through. We see light around us in God's creation, in beautiful sunsets, in lights from people's windows as we walk, and the sunlight which brings such warmth and pinpoints of light and hope beginning to emerge as the vaccine is available to more and more people. Light to show us that there is an end. We are all children of God. We are bearers of the light, of his light, even though often we're not aware of it. We bear that light to others as we speak with them, meet on Zoom, text, phone, and as we spend time quietly with God, we can receive his light afresh to share with others. As we go forward into the darkness of this seemingly, seemingly long night, let us thank God that Jesus is still light of the world and let us ask him to show us his light afresh to bring hope to us and to those around us. So to finish a poem from Malcolm Geit called I Am the Light of the World. I see your world in light that shines behind me, lit by a sun whose rays I cannot see. The smallest gleam of light still seems to find me, or find the child who's hiding deep inside me. I see your light reflected in the water, or kindled suddenly in someone's eyes. It shimmers through the living leaves of summer, or spills from leaden veins in leaden skies. It gathers in the candles at our vespers. It concentrates in tiny drops of dew. At times it sings for joy. At times it whispers. But all the time it calls me back to you. I follow you upstream through this dark night, my saviour, source and spring, my life and light. Amen. Let us pray to the Father through Christ, our light and life. And we thank Nandides for kindly writing these intercessions for us. Today marks the presentation of Christ in the temple, where Simeon had waited so long for this experience and was so moved that he was able to say, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. May we too have the patience to wait. Thy will be done. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May the blessing of God be present in your living. May the comfort of God be felt in your working. May the love of God surround you and his word heal you. May you find peace in the midst of your busyness. May you find grace in times of trial. 
May the blessing of God go with you. May the comfort of God go with you. May the love of God go with you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Dear Lord, please bless especially this day all grown grey in your service, who care deeply for the advance of your kingdom, those now frail and at a distance from a church, those now deaf and unable to take part as once did, those sick in hospital, care homes or at home, especially those known to the church or known only to yourselves, to ourselves. In your mercy, meet our various needs today. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O God, our Creator, by whose mercy the world turned from darkness to light, bless all who witness, whose witness to the truth is expressed through politics, peacemaking at high levels or through commerce or the concern of science. We give into your hands our unsolved problems, our unfinished tasks and unfulfilled hopes, knowing only that those things which you bless will prosper, our hope for years to come. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. All loved and loving carry to the grave the ones whom every effort could not save. Amongst them all those carers whose strong love brought life for others with the lives they gave. You taught us how to pray. Give us grace to live the words we say. And surround all who are sick in body, mind or spirit, especially those on our welcome sheet, Bob and Elizabeth Harland, Lauren, Philippa Leclerc, Margaret McAllister, Grace McGilvery, Steph, Tom Mouncey, Vittorio and Patricia Watts, and the long-term unwell, Caroline Bean, William Buncombe, Vera Edwards, Jean Gardner, Julia Jones, Kate Morgan, Jane Seal, Brett Tribe, Vera Wilnecker, and David Wilson. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Dear Lord, give us faith to look with fearless eyes beyond the tragedies of a world in pain, knowing that whatever anguish rends our hearts, what matters most of all is how we respond. May we lean upon your great strength trustfully. We pray especially for those who have died recently, including Elaine Hyde. Help us to wait for the unfolding of your will patiently and face tomorrow confidently and courageously. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
in the tender compassion of our God, the day spring from on high has broken upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. I offer John the peace. I offer those who are on their own the peace. Those who are with others, please offer them the peace. Hug them if you're able to and just be glad um, that you're with them or be glad that we're together in this service. So we sing love divine or love's excelling. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is one with you from all eternity. For on this day he appeared in the temple, in substance of our flesh, to come near to us in judgment. He searches the hearts of all your people and brings to light the image of your splendour. Your servant Simeon acclaimed him as a light to lighten the nations, while Anna spoke of him to all who looked for your redemption. Destined for the falling and rising of many, he was lifted high upon the cross, with a sword of sorrow pierced his mother's heart, when by his sacrifice he made our peace with you. And now we rejoice and glorify your name, that we too have seen your salvation, and join with angels and archangels in their unending hymn of praise, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious God, your son Jesus ate with friend and stranger, with devoted disciple and sceptical scrutinizer, with the one who would betray and the one who had denied. He made food a place of encounter with you. By the power of your Holy Spirit, visit your people and sanctify us in the image of your crucified Son. Through the same Spirit, make these gifts of bread and wine be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Cleansing God, your son Jesus taught and healed as one with authority. Where your children search in vain for someone to trust, show them your face. Where your people long for one to lead or a path to follow, send them your pillar of cloud by day and of fire by night. Where your church is faltering in fear and doubt, make yourself known in the ones we regard as the least among us. Usher in the day when all may taste and see the riches of your grace and your arms of love will all the world embrace. In Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, in union with the Father. Amen.
Lord Jesus, help us to know your light and to bring your light to a needy world. As we pray together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us. Bring us to light and life. Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace, grant us your peace. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. We love you above all things and desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally together, Come into our hearts. We embrace you, knowing you are already there, and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ given for us all. the blood of Christ shed for us all. Let us pray. Lord, you fulfilled the hope of Simeon and Anna who lived to welcome the Messiah. May we who have received these gifts beyond words prepare to meet Christ Jesus when he comes to bring us to eternal life, for he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Together we say, Lord God, the springing source of everlasting light, pour into the hearts of your faithful people the brilliance of your eternal splendour that we may have the darkness of our souls dispelled, and so be counted worthy to stand before you in that eternal temple where you live and reign, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father, here we bring to an end our celebration of the Saviour's birth. Help us in whom he has been born to live his life that has no end. Here we have rejoiced with faithful Simeon and Anna. Help us who have found the Lord in his temple to trust in your eternal promises. Here we turn from Christ's birth to his passion. Help us for whom Lent is near to enter deeply into the Easter mystery. Here we have greeted the light of the world Help us who now go in peace to let the light of Christ shine in our lives. So we sing the post-communion hymn, The Spirit Live to Set Us Free.
Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Stay in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.